let, let's uh, jump into some uh, not great news. Uh, the outlet The Gamers reported that the PlayStation 3, PSP, and Vita digital storefronts are permanently going to be removed beginning July 2nd and with the Vita store closing on August 27th. An official announcement for the closures is expected to come at some point at the end of the month. And it would appear, unlike other scenarios where games are like delisted, such as uh, Tales from the Borderlands, which is actually coming back uh, sometime this year, I believe. It already came back. Oh, there we go. But unlike in that scenario where games are delisted, uh, users are going to be completely unable to re-download games that they own licenses for. Okay, um, that is so, strange. So this poses a unique issue for Sony, because unlike their direct competitor, Microsoft, they don't have an optimal means of accessing previous generations content past the PlayStation 4. PlayStation 3 titles are playable via the streaming service PlayStation Now, but that also has its own wave of issues such as uh, input lag, data caps, and outright, outright just lacking the fast internet fast enough internet speeds to get it going in the first place. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is um, centrally due to the PlayStation 3 cell processor, which has just been a giant headache in that generation in of itself, and especially makes things harder to uh, port over or to allow for emulation. Um, so this is kind of unprecedented within the gaming sphere that at, like at this big of a level where you're just not able to re download your older stuff as well as just like the, the store going down as well. If you didn't own stuff before. Mm -hmm. uh, so it kind of brings in a question a little bit and we can get into this later, like point by points, but it brings in a question, the viability of shifting away from physical media and fully embracing the supposed digital future that I advocate for. <laughs> um, but then that in that scenario, physical media is no stranger to its own series of woes, including inflation, theft, and damage. But it's also worth noting that even relying purely on physical reinstallations of games, like if you're just constantly uninstalling, reinstalling, you're still going to be left high and dry in terms of receiving patches, updates, and downloadable content since you won't have access to that. That's actually something I was going to bring up because, uh, and this may shock some people to hear me say this, but to mirror uh, something my friend Ian had said, I think on the podcast he's on, is that, you know, while physical in a lot of ways, when you go older, when, you, when the older you go with physical, you know, you do have at least everything on that disc. From the PS4, Xbox One generation and on, that's not really the case. And even so, like you brought up, Jose, you know, like people say physical is forever. Yes and no. Um, cartridges, car discs rot. Cartridges oxidize and have to either have the heads cleaned or just flat out don't work anymore. Um, Absolutely. There's not more of these cartridges being made, so you know, like I remember the uh, the Mario Duck Hunt like coffee table was going around on the internet for a while. Those are things, you know, not to say like I'm not shaming anybody for that, but just those that is a limited resource that was used to make that that you will not get back. So, um, this. Do you mind if I go off on a topic, Jose, or did you have more you wanted to add? Um, you if you. Let me just go ahead and finish this up, then I'll go ahead and toss yeah. over to you. Yeah, and then and then and then I want to bring something up after Blaine that's totally niche on this on this topic, but totally actually <laughs> works here. <laughs> Let's see. I'm so gonna be just fucking dating since just go. <laughs> so uh, just to finish up uh, what I wrote here, uh, Sony is by no means facing financial turmoil, as evident by the rampant success the company has seen through the entirety of the last generation, as well as with the launch of the PlayStation Five. Mm -hmm. uh, closing the stores for older hardware has the indisputable benefit of saving Sony money but it's also an undeniable loss for users. Uh, the best course of action for users to take is to download any and all games they want to preserve to their hard drives with higher capacity drives, such as the, I believe you can use up to a one terabyte uh, 2.5 drive on a PS3. Anything higher than that, it tends to uh, act up a little bit. But so storing your, storing your data on that and also having a backup in case your initial hard drive goes out, um, that'd be the best way to preserve your stuff. It's also highly advisable that those wishing to hold on to their Vita libraries to grab the system's proprietary memory cards before they're gone, uh, before so uh, those, those before those get held. Yeah, they're already expensive as is, they're but especially dollars. But especially, but especially before scalpers uh, swoop in on them and then hold them at even higher prices. Uh, the potential damage caused by these closures isn't just limited to games natively made for the associated platforms, as they're uh, blah blah blah. Uh, but they're also incredibly good um, PlayStation 1 emulator machines. So they, they're they all able to access, like, entire... I, I think there's something weird on the Vita. You can't play the fucking original Crash Bandicoots or Spyro games. So that, 
that that's aside from the problem. But they they have access to this entire backlog of PlayStation One games, and so you by taking down these, I know crisis on it. <laughs> So by so by taking down uh, these stores, uh, Sony is actively destroying their own attempts at uh, preserving their own history and relegating the easiest method of accessing their libraries to third party emulators on PC. I and I, I added this last part to be a little sassy asshole, uh, but that last piece comes as a bit of a ironic juxtaposition. Uh, when Astro's Playroom exists, which entirely relies on the central premise of nostalgia and pride in the company's history. Uh, Blaine, did you want to go ahead and go ahead? Um, Sarah, how long is your th- thing? Because mine's going to be kind of a whole kind of going to want to walk through the woods kind of deal. How, what, is yours just like a, a point that you want to make? Yeah, so um, obviously for those who don't know me, which I'm baffled if you did it, I play a lot of dating sims, and as of recently, the Switch has become the new, like, Atome machine, because it's very hard to get Atome dating sims here in America, but the Switch has become that system. Well, before the Switch was that system, the Vita was that system system and Before as of right now SP, I believe. Yeah, uh yes for some of for only only in japan it was the vita yeah. that they were releasing here in america but because of that there's a lot of players who they don't play many video games they only play uh, atomes so they own just a vita and they use all their monies to all their monies they use all their money to word. get money they, <laughs> they use all their monies to get at- atomes for the vita but some can't buy them physically, they have to buy them off the PlayStation Store. They're basically not going to be able to use their only console anymore after this, and will be forced to shell out, if they want to, like $399, to get, or two or two ninety nine if they get a Switch Lite, to have to buy a new system just to play the only uh, type of games that they play. Mm-hmm. And I think that's incredibly stupid, because a Vita was how I started playing Atomes, I which I mean I can't talk because I have a Vita T uh, T TV, but that thing's gonna be obsolete if this happens. That thing's just gonna be a box. No, well, I mean I'm if, gonna, if, if you can download your stuff and buy it, but aside from that, you're you're only gonna be able to play what you have. Yeah, um, so it's like it sucks because these niche people who like these who like this niche type of game, they're pretty much shit out of luck when this happens. And it just like it sucks, especially for me as I, as I'm part of a face face uh, Facebook group. Seeing all of them getting super hyped when they get a new Vita, uh, uh, Tome in, or when they buy a new Vita one on on their Vita, I, like it, it it just now makes me sad. <laughs> I think Blaine. Like, I think <laughs> Blaine has a very interesting perspective on this, and in that she had just received. Um, I I guess my my old Vita back in. When did you get it? Back in January? Yeah, something like that. Something like January that. January or February or something. Yeah, so you just got access to this to this incredible library of games, whether it's the PSP, the Vita, and especially it's a damn good PS1 machine. Yeah. And and then this just this news comes out. This has got to be like such a gigantic fucking slap to the face. It's not the worst thing because at least I can get um some Vita games physical. Um, mm-hmm. but that being said, or at least the ones that I'm concerned about, but that being said, um, I'm just trying to think of where I want to start with this. Cause this is going to be a kind of, I just go all over the place with this topic cause I have to, um, I mean, I don't think the biggest problem is so much that the stores are being taken down or closing. Cause this would have, if it made it to November, this would have been the 15th year that the PS3 storefront would be going. Um, that's a good run. Uh, the Vita store, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but whatever, a decent amount of time. Um, I believe it came out 2012. Okay, so eight, nine years, depending. You know, it's still a decent amount of time. Not Probably not as long as it should have been, but still decent. The problem is the fact that, you know, we're not finding this out from an official announcement. We're finding this out. We're finding this out from mm. a rumor, essentially, a credit or a credible rumor. And something we all knew was going to happen. We were all kind of guessing was going to happen since they changed last year. They changed the, uh, the the website's functionality where you could only purchase PS4, or PS5, and that's it. As opposed to PS, PS1 Classic, PS2 Classic on multiple systems. PS3, PS4, soon to be PS5 once that got announced. 
Um, um, to elaborate on that real quick, it was specifically so you couldn't buy PS3, uh, PSP, and Vita games from like on, on a desktop or phone. You couldn't buy it from yes. the website. You had to buy it directly from the hardware store. However, you could not hardware go store like fucking Dale's or whatever. No, the exactly. store on the hardware. You could go into via another link to access Hello? that. You still can. Sir, where is your uh, ladders and PlayStation 3s at? Please? Oh, my God. <laughs> um, but, but that being said, you know, like, we're not only finding this not from an official thing, but we're finding this out from an unofficial source, like, what, about two months, give or take, before this is supposed to all go down? And maybe three months when the announcement first came out. Like, it, the fact that you're giving people no time to prepare for this, the fact that, like, I'm willing to bet, honestly, that if this information hadn't come out maybe no one would have even found out about it. They would have just done it, which you can say, oh, no, they wouldn't do that because the backlash would be crazy. I'm like, yeah, but they also would look at it as, well, we're not making much money off of it now, and that's not going to make people stop buying video games from us in the future. Mm -hmm. So it's a risk we're willing to take for uh, two, a service that we don't want to deal with anymore. Two quick points on that. Sony has not come out and said anything against this whatsoever, like not even trying to do like the PR denial. Exactly. Um, and then the other point was, um, fuck, I forgot. <laughs> was it the Jim Ryan quote? Uh, no, that wasn't that. Um, oh, now I remember. Um, so like, yes, these, these stores have been around for forever and like admittedly, yes, the people actively using like the PS3 stores to buy games or to redownload their stuff. It's, it's not as big as like what's on PlayStation 4, not as big as what's on PlayStation 5. And I would like super buy this argument. I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying that you're making the argument. This is like the royal argument, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that like, oh, they're it's a poor company. They're struggling. That they that they need these extra resources. They had the most fucking f financial success. And uh, I think I have an article here somewhere. But uh, like 2019 was the most uh, financially successful year that they had. Maybe it's not 2019. I'd have to look at it, but basically the point is Sony is doing incredibly fucking well, specifically thanks to PlayStation. And so uh, what, whatever it costs to keep the servers running, it, it is, I would imagine it's minuscule in, in the uh, grander scheme of things. Well, what's even crazier? Um, especially oh, in... Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Or Jose, whatever. Or, or I guess, whatever. I'm sorry, I'll just elaborate on it real quick. Mm -hmm. um, where did I put my stuff? Oh. I'm sorry, you, you go ahead real quick, Mace. I want to find the quote. Yeah, I, I think I think a, probably an important conversation I think people aren't really having though is um what uh, is the um the environmental impact of running these servers that barely anybody's using. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel I think, like um I feel I like that's, that's that can also make a make a major point into you know either shutting these servers down or switching them. To, to 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 something that people will actually access because you know we uh, ps3 the um, psp vita you know they're very um there's they're sure there are a lot of there are sure are a lot of people that that still use the consoles but mm. you know there's a certain point where we kind of have to you know look at the the, the cost benefit analysis and and understand that you know it, it might be time to 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 move on a little bit and yeah i don't and disagree I, with that at all i yeah and I'm, I'm at the face but value of it they, i don't i'm sorry yeah, yeah. I, just, I just want to say but if they don't say anything that yeah. i have i i don't understand that yeah. <laughs> like, See, for me for me the way i well i i completely agree with that i look at it more as the preserving old playstation one games aspect of it absolutely as, mm -hmm. as someone who collects Mm -hmm. I mean, I have been able to collect in a, in a while, but in my early teens, I somehow got my parents to buy me like old PlayStation 1 games, like old horror games, Parasite Eve, Dino Crisis, all the old Resident Evils, because those are considered gems now. Like, you can't get those anymore. The, the, the PS1 classics on the PlayStation Store on the PS3 were some of the only ways to play those games. Mm -hmm. If you couldn't get a, a physical copy, because physical copies of those games could vary from like sixty dollars to like fucking four four hundred dollars. So I think also you 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 could get I think the Fatal Frames and the Rule of Rose game on PS2 Classics as well. So like they were Not pretty much of, ways. I'll I'll check that, but I don't believe Rule it, of Rose it, is available. It was either it was either Rule of Rose or Haunting Grounds. 
It I'll was one of those two. I swear you could. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I swear that it was no, one no, of those no, I'll check it. On classic. But like, um, you just you just can't get those now anymore if this goes through, which means a bunch of people who wanted to try these games without shelling out the bajillions amounts of money to buy one the consoles I could play it and two of the game itself. It, like we're we're just losing all of this his history, and it sucks. <laughs> like like yes, destroying the environment sucks more, and I totally understand that. I'm not saying that you're on, but like also mm-hmm. just just the idea that we're losing all this history to now people on eBay boosting the prices of these mm-hmm. games up mm-hmm. just because you can't buy them for ten for ten dollars any anymore. Going back to the um the cost benefit uh, argument, like yes, at face value, it absolutely um stands to reason why they would do that but you look at their direct competitor xbox where the overwhelming majority of not just the previous generation but the 360 generation and an original xbox that they're there's like not paid updates this is just free stuff that there's that they're supporting them on current hardware you can they're all available digitally they're adding fps boosts they're adding auto hdr like they're going like leagues and leagues above to make like already existing libraries uh not just not just available, but also actively making them better than what they were originally. And then Sony mm. is just standing here, just like we're going to delete our history, we're going to delete our preservation yeah. efforts. But yeah, but you know the the, the Xbox and the Xbox 360 that's available on the Microsoft Store is a fraction of what those consoles <laughs> had. That's all um, true. Um, and then uh, what regard? I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree that Sony should have put um backwards compatibility as a priority for the ps5 i think i think um i think think ideal scenario if if they were going to make this announcement and then they were going to say but we're bringing backwards compatibility and the ps1 store to ps5 i'd be like okay that's infinitely better or even if they had just said we're having a fire sale you know for the next up until it goes under just buy what you want, buy what you can. It'll all be discounted specifically on those consoles, and then after that, it goes away forever. But you know, and you're I, able to get at least what you want. I still believe there's also um, limitations on the PS3 and other consoles that would limit how well it can play once the servers go down. Oh, absolutely. Um, even, 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 even if you keep it offline, I believe there are limitations that'll that'll that like after like a few after like a few years or something it'll it it won't be able to play those games anymore i feel like one Um, thing that people don't bring up and like um it's like yes like if a flash sale were to happen i would absolutely go out and buy some stuff i just haven't gotten for whatever reason but what about uh some kid 10 years from now says hey i want to go back to the ps1 library is there a convenient way that i can go through it uh, sorry, you were born two uh, 10 years too late you weren't there when the flash sale happened and it, it just so for so for people that are like in the now right now good for us but down the line it's just the, no luck for them oh i think that's True. just um I, well, yeah mace i think you're gonna say what i was about to say anyway i think this is just a um i think that we need to talk about like hey uh like emulation's important and uh and like online uh online um servers and access to those games do exist and are relatively well maintained um also just nothing lasts forever like i mean i know it's gonna sound surprising that i'm taking that side of this that too as well literally nothing lasts forever my love Um, for you exists forever it's unfortunate (laughs) and it sucks and there's and we also have to you also you know at a certain point as time goes on the desire to play these games also significantly drops in 10 years you're gonna you're gonna be a weird kid in ten years to want to play a PS1 game, you know? Like that's true to a degree, but I feel and if this if I can use this to segue what into my other point. Yeah. Excuse you, Mesa, as someone who's <laughs> looking for a very rare PlayStation One game right now. Hey, I you. said a kid in ten years. You're not a kid in ten years. I will be. Oh my God. I, I mean, I, I mean, hold on. I mean, even take it from like a like let's let's say someone's like only a sony gamer like they don't have the money to buy an xbox or whatever if they if the um, they want to go back and like download some digital ps3 games they can't uh, like let's say they th- like ps now just as an option because it's uh realistically not an option for a lot of people uh you still can't access that on xbox you have backwards compatibility on there like i, I was talking to someone today i believe um i don't even 
when I when I go to play like an older game on Steam, I don't even fucking think of it as a generation. It just fucking works. I'll I'll pop open Fallout uh, New Vegas. I'll pop open um, Resident Evil Four. That's a fucking sixth generation game. Well, yeah. So that's I'm just like, it, it just works. What if I want to play all three of the Resistance games, damn it? Oh, not they keep, fuck- out. That's because they of keep the fucking... They keep fucking... Sarah, Sarah, for that. wait, wait. Sarah, they keep fucking teasing that on and Twitter, and I'm ever... Everybody, please. Hmm. And I yes. hate it. I, I, think, yeah. I think something we need to look at is... It, it, I, I agree with pretty much almost, almost everything Mesa said, and I think a bigger thing to look at is not so much why we need to keep this store open, but more to what Jose was saying, why we need to acknowledge that Sony could actually make this work in the best of both worlds and chooses not to. Um, Exactly, yeah. It's a known fact. It's a known fact that the PS4 has the ability to run, at the very least, PlayStation 2 games because they sell PlayStation PlayStation 2 games on their storefront. You can buy them right there. I believe um, people have said that that is the best PlayStation 2 emulator, period. It is. That's the one that they want that they have internally. But they won't unlock the ability to play the discs on the console because they want you to buy it from their store, even mm-hmm. though it's like ten games. Well, I think um, a lot of uh, a lot of the truth of it, you, yeah. you had mentioned it earlier. Um, this stuff isn't going to happen when the head of PlayStation doesn't give a fuck about older games. No, it's literally. that it's that um, Jim Ryan quote. I I, I forget what mm-hmm. game specifically someone was playing. Says uh, like, was, oh that yeah, or it was Ridge Race. Gran Turismo, sorry, Ridge Racer, Gran Turismo, yeah. Yeah, he went past it, he said, like, ew, this looks like shit, why would, well, he didn't say it looks like shit, but it looks old, why would anyone want to play, play this, it looks ancient, mm-hmm. and just like, well, when you don't have someone at the top believing in this, it's not gonna happen, when you have someone like, absolutely. um, like Phil Spencer, who actively gives a shit about this stuff, you, you see stuff happen. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Well, and you have the, also the problems now of, you know, like, we know that they can pl- run PlayStation 2 games on that console if they want, because they do. They just won't let you run the discs. Chances are you could also probably run these PlayStation 1 games on there if they wanted to make it work. You probably could. I'm going to mm-hmm. argue the same thing for the PS5, honestly. But the the whole situation then comes to... With these stores closing and them not working these things out, I think even more so from the fact of like like to go into more what Sarah was saying about the PS1 games that we're losing that have like these high values is you're gonna go from being able to buy like Dino Crisis and these other games for five ninety nine, four ninety nine, nine ninety nine, nineteen ninety nine, maybe even twenty nine ninety nine to giant figure 